Hello, and I'm artist Leslie Watson, and this is a new set of YouTube videos to teach you how to draw like me. Now, unlike the Draw With Me section, this is more along the lines of actually how to do pencil work, like my time lapse ones that you've seen, or hopefully you've seen, and they kind of improve your artwork. Uh, now, this is starting off from you know the basics the beginner steps so it is very helpful if you are trying to learn how to draw anyway let's get into this so yeah we start off with two circles today i think it's a good introduction anyway so first thing first you know the pencil i'm using there is just a normal kind of HB pencil that you would get in any kind of pack. As you can see, it's Star Wars related, so happy days. Anyway, as you can see, I'm just kind of shading in wee bits and pieces there, kind of through almost to the center, but already you can start to see where the light would be hitting the circle. Then I crack in the 3B pencil, which obviously, even though I'm using the overhand technique, when I'm sketching this, I am still, you know, showing off where the difference between the two of them. Now, as you can see, I'm putting in the wee bits there of the difference between HB, 3B, and now the 6B that I'm using. 6B obviously being darker. The higher the B, the darker the actual lead. It's always a nice thing to remember. And that's me just writing in the light and the dark. And as you can see, so I'm using the basic technique that I actually learned how to use, which is smudging, and I do it with my finger. So even if you don't have all the money to get anything, you know, fancy, fancy pencils or whatnot, there are always means and ways around that. Now, as you can see, I'm going over with the 6B, making it darker, showing, you know, where the light's coming from, and I do that all the way up with blending. Now, with this kind of blending as well, you see that I start using different hand techniques, but I still try and keep the overhand one, just to show you guys. So there's a wee bit of cross-hatching in there which is always very good, but we'll cover cross-hatching and different types of shading probably in the next video or two. But yeah, as you can see, I am just shading away and I'm blending all of them together. This gives more the effect that it is an actual ball instead of just being a circle. Now, as you can see, I'm cracking with my blending sticks now. Now, if you have the money to get blending sticks, or even just cotton buds, would do the exact same job. But the blending sticks are the more professional ones to have. So yeah, now you can see that it is more like an actual ball where you can see where the light is hitting it instead of it just being a normal circle that we started off with. And as you can see, I'm just doing a wee bit of rubbing out and whatnot. Now, for the next circle, I wanted to try and use it for something that, you know, is what I kind of know and love, especially most of the people being on the channel here, being bit like myself being a bit of a geek so I am going to use more underhanded and modified writing technique with the holding of my pencil in my hand you will see the, the overhand as well but I thought you know what let's do something that's circular that everybody loves and so I went with a pokeball now I kind of drew this from memory drew around another little circle just for the actual eye of the pokeball and just kind of went with a couple of lines 
as you can see I am constantly changing them and whatnot but I just thought I would show you guys the techniques that I just have shown you there and how it can actually be used in a drawing. Obviously there's a few other wee details with the Pokeball, so I try to, you know, blend them in whilst I'm still doing it. But as you can see, straight away, in with the HB pencil, kind of marking out the guidelines, trying to get that circular shape there around the eye of the Pokeball. And yeah, just mapping it out the way that I would do any other drawing. So I also thought it would be a really cool idea to actually show you what it would be like if the Pokeball was actually sitting on a surface. So that's why I put in a wee bit of shade there and a wee bit of, you know what I mean, you know, that's a surface underneath the Pokeball. Which I think is very cool as well. It kind of shows you more of the shadow, the you know, the underlining shadows as well around the actual object. Because, you know, light can come in from not just one source most of the time, it's usually two or three. Now, as you can see as well, I'm changing pencils. I'm only using, you know, three pencils in this video. If you've noticed through some of the time-lapse videos that I do have on here, I do swap maybe between maybe six or seven you know depending on what I'm drawing that's okay to do but for beginners I would always try and stick to between two and three pencils just because you know you have to learn depth you know the correct darkness of your pencils and whatnot and that you know you gradually build that up over time and you know it's all about judgment as well but I think I've pretty much nailed it and whether you use three pencils or seven pencils you can still make great art doesn't matter if you, even if you're just using one you know I know I see artists all the time doing fantastic masterpieces with just ballpoint pens you know you don't need expensive high grade art materials to make great art and that is something that I can't stress enough and I hope that gets across on a lot of my videos that I don't always have the most expensive of materials but I still produce some quality artwork and even with my pencils you know the ones that I'm using on here are the Dalarone, you know, artist pencils, but you can pick up a pack of them for maybe, you know, up to 20 pounds, but they are like high grade art pencils. There's other ones I've seen, I've got off Wish and stuff, you know, wish.com and for a couple of quid and they are almost as good. But at the end of the day, if you've only got an HB pencil, that's all you really actually need. So do never be discouraged that you don't have the right materials because it is all about finding the ways and how to do things instead of the actual materials that you use. I also noticed that I kind of give the Pokeball a little bit more depth by increasing the size of the top and the bottom part by just putting a little bit of lip uh, into the black uh, where the black band is. And also I increase some of the highlights by using the rubber there. Now, I think this is, well it's a 
decent enough. I think it was a half an hour sketch all together to do this Pokeball. You know what I mean? You know, I didn't take too long on it. I didn't go in too much detail. But I thought it came out very well. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope maybe it's encouraged you to pick up a couple of pencils and, you know, try it for yourself. I hope that you're going to learn something from this uh, playlist and I hope you all have a fantastic day, whatever you're doing, and stay safe. And thank you very much for watching. Thanks.